this is exactly the same as what we were doing on the reverse. It's just the factoring step that's a tiny bit harder. Um, I'm not even gonna go through this example. You can literally see it's the same. I'm plugging in zero for y, I'm factoring, I'm solving. The only difference is like, because this number is not one, right? This number's not one. It's going to end up being that one of these numbers is not one. And so we're going to get some decimals, but it's okay. Like we use a calculator if we're stressed and we don't worry about it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and factor this one. So I know that this times this has to equal five X squared. So that's going to be five X times X. And then this times this has to equal negative two. So one's going to be positive. One's going to be negative. I'm just going to write them lightly, right? I might have to switch them. And I know I'm going to have two and one. So like if I put it like this, and let's just try it. Like this would be negative 10 plus one. Oh, that would be negative nine. So no, I need it to be three. Let's try switching the numbers. I'm gonna deal with the numbers first and I'll come back to the signs. So this would be five X times negative one. That's negative five plus two. Oh, that's negative three. Okay, so now I need to switch the signs. So I'm gonna switch the signs. I'm gonna write the numbers darker. So this is gonna be the negative. This is gonna be the positive and I'm gonna write the one darker. And let's just double check. So that's 5x minus 2x. Perfect. That equals 3x. So then here are my two equations. 5x minus 2 equals 0. And x plus 1 equals 0. So here I solve and I just get this, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Over here, this is where I end up getting a decimal, which is fine. We are unconcerned. We are using our calculator if we need to. This is, you can either write two fifths or you can write it as a decimal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's the same. Okay, either way, this is a number less than one comma zero, right? And my y-intercept, if I plug in zero for x here, right, this will be, this term will be zero, this term will be zero, and my y-intercept will be negative two. So let's graph. These are all super small numbers, so I can put zero, negative two all the way down here because I don't have any numbers bigger than two actually. So negative one, zero is here. And negative 0 0.4, that's even less than one. Like let's say positive one, zero is here. That's even like this, right? So then when I graph it, if I want the vertex to be right in the middle of these two points, it's just gonna be like a tiny bit to the left of the y-intercept here. And eh, a little messy, that's okay. All right, that's what it looks like. Go ahead and try these.